Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Mixcraft Quick Tips, the series where we take a look at helpful tips and common questions in Mixcraft to improve your workflow and your productions. Today, we're here to address the topic of gain staging, which we were asked about recently, and I think this is a great subject, and it's something that's really important to understand to get the best results in your mix sessions, and is also maybe a little bit tricky to wrap your head around, especially when you're newer to production, but we're going to go through all that today. Before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe down below for more quick tips, and if you have a suggestion for a future episode, let us know down in the comments. Gain staging comes in a couple of different flavors, the initial gain staging or the level you set to record at and the gain staging you apply later on through the processing chain down the line. Proper gain staging ensures that your recordings have the best possible signal to noise ratio and also make sure you get full use over the mix fader travel paths. Today we're going to keep things simple by sticking with a single acoustic guitar recording and we're going to run it through an average mixing chain and talk about gain staging at each step of the process. The initial gain staging step in your signal chain is going to be your recording phase, and in this case this is usually set by your microphone preamp or your audio interface level, but if you're not using an audio interface and you're instead recording directly into your computer or with a USB microphone, this is going to be set with the fader handle inside of Mixcraft. What we want to look for is a healthy level for the loudest point in the performance that's going to give us the best compromise between overall loudness and headroom. Headroom is the amount of gain left over that we can apply to increase the signal level. If we go too hot, we're going to get into digital clipping territory, but if we go way too loud, we can't really go up from there without starting to clip, which can make things a little bit annoying to work with, so it's good to leave just a little bit of a safety net. Gain staging can be a little bit tricky on particularly dynamic performances, like a vocal passage with a very quiet part followed by a very loud part. In cases like that, you would want to gain stage for the loudest segment of that performance. However, you might consider doing two separate recordings, that way you can gain stage for the quiet part and the loud part and get a proper level for both. Generally speaking, when we're setting the level, we want to make sure we're going up about three quarters of the way up the volume meter. So let's begin by setting our initial level and recording our guitar performance. Now that we've got the recording done, we might need to adjust the level slightly after the fact. Let's play it back and see where we're at on the meter. In this case, we might be slightly too hot, and we can adjust this by using the gain knob inside of the mixer. To enable this in the mixer, we'll go to the mixer panel preferences here, and make sure we've got the box checked for the gain knob, and then hit OK. Now we can expand the mixer view and adjust the gain level so that the peak sits right around this 0 dB line, or unity gain. And that should do it. If you don't have your tracks gain staged properly, you're not able to take advantage of the full fader travel path or the range all the way down from minus infinity up to plus six. This becomes really important in the later mixing stages because if your signal doesn't line up with where your fader is sitting, you're not really able to do any precise volume adjustments and you're not getting the maximum use out of that fader, which can cause quite a few headaches down the line. The next step in proper gain staging is making sure you're compensating for any effects you add. In this case, we're going to add some basic EQ and compression, and we're going to have to compensate for these things because they're going to alter the level of the signal. Let's begin by working with some basic EQ on this recording. Now at this point what we want to do is enable and bypass the effect and check for any audible difference in volume that's going to happen from changing the signal with the EQ. In this case, if we carefully watch the meter, it's ever so slightly louder than it was before because we've cut out some of that low end, but we've also introduced a slight boost in the low mids, which is bringing out a little bit of that round energy towards the bottom end. To compensate for this, we can find the output gain control for the EQ and dip this down to compensate for that change in level. And now in the meter here, we can see it's sitting right where it should be. 
Next up, we'll add some basic compression here and we're going to take a look at the meter once again and we'll use the makeup control here on the compressor to control the makeup gain after the compression is applied to compensate for any reduction in volume we experience once we start compressing the recording. As you continue to add more effects, you'll just want to take a moment to double check yourself at every stage of this process. And one final check you can do that's really easy is to bypass all of the effects and bring them back in and make sure there's not a significant change in volume. Within Mixgraph, this is really easy. We can right click on the effects area and click effects list is active to bypass it and then click it again to make sure it's checked to bring it back in. So we'll do this one time just to make sure we're not having any kind of significant change in volume between the neutral unprocessed signal and the process signal. In this case, it's pretty much identical, so we've gained stage properly and we're good to go. And that's all there is to gain staging. It is a little bit of a time consuming process and it is certainly something that's easy to miss or just kind of forget to do. However, once you start to train yourself to think in this way to make sure you're compensating for every change you're making in order to ensure proper gain staging, you should be able to get through this process a lot faster and get better results out of your mix sessions. And so that wraps everything up for this video. Thanks for tuning in and as always, thanks for watching.